another work session if y'all would. First of all, I'd like to uh, have everyone take knowledge of the fact that there was a state trooper hit on 95 this evening. Our prayers and thoughts will go out to him and his family and uh, hope that he'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> this is Wednesday, July the 8th at 6 p.m. or a few minutes after. Our number one on our agenda is ordinance number 1852, and it, an ordinance to amend the operating budget of the mayor and city council of Laurel, Maryland, with the fiscal year of July 1st, 2014 through June the 30th of 2015. Michelle? Yes, sir. Uh, this is the sixth amendment to the FY15 general operating budget. Um, the fiscal year having closed last year, we're still getting numbers in. Um, from the state and other sources. However, at this time, I'd, I would like to begin this ordinance um, with some things that we have definite information. Um, so on page two, there's an increase of $47,021. <coughs> that was additional highway user revenue that was not previously budgeted uh, that we would propose to transfer to the CIP dedicated for street improvement projects. Further down in the same spreadsheet, the $721,000 in police fines, that is specifically red light camera revenue, gross revenue um, exceeding the current budget. And that would be um, distributed in part to the police department budget <coughs> to offset those processing expenditures, as well as an additional um, contribution by the city to the pension fund, and uh, the remainder being transferred to the CIP for cash funding of capital projects to be determined. The next item on um, page two, an additional $700 um, used by the um, investigative unit of the police department to purchase cameras, so that offset is in the police budget. And an additional $25,000, um, as you know, with the operations and administration of the 4th of July committee, <coughs> their financial activities are shown through the operating budget. So this has a direct offset in the community promotions expenditure budget and just reflective of um, paying for the down payment of the um, fireworks and other expenses that they incur for the um, that day's activities, the band, the sound system, um, and the um, porta johns. So. So it's an overall increase in the budget of $793,721. On the expenditure side, also on page two at the bottom, so there's a decrease of $40,000 from the mayor's budget, specifically the legal services uh, line item, a decrease of $20,000 in the city administrator's Budget. This was um, lap salary. Those items um, are part of the transfer to the CIP as well as uh, partial designated funding for the refunds of the local income tax credits as determined by the Supreme Court ruling in the state of Maryland comptroller versus Wynn. The next item, again, is the community promotions increase for the 4th of July activities. The $398,950 to the police department is the combination of the uh, red light camera processing fees directly offset by the revenue and the $700 in seized currency. Further down the line is the $100,000 increase to the retirement uh, budget for the additional contribution to the pension fund. And then $329,771 would be um, the combination of the transfer to the CIP as well as designating those funds for that income tax 
um, that we'll have to return. Okay, thank you. Questions from the council, Fred? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Michelle, if I could just, have a, I have a couple of questions. Maybe I'll start with the, um, the revenue. Um, under the 721,000, you mentioned special projects. Um, maybe it's more the, the mayor, the city administrator to elaborate, but um, under expenditures, uh, rather revenue, uh, were you saying that that part of that 721 is going to be used for other things, including special projects? Yes, sir. So okay. part of it uh, goes to the police budget um, right. because with the increase in revenue for red light cameras, you also have the <laughs> increase in expenditure for processing fees that we pay to the vendor. Um, but the difference for that uh, between that and the 721 could be used to transfer to the CIP okay. for capital projects that as of yet to be determined. Got it. Either a change in funding from what we've already established for FY16 or additional projects. We just haven't gotten that far okay. at this point in time. Okay. Now, moving to expenditures, uh, items 10286 through 10291. Uh, these appear to be projects. Is that the uh, Community <laughs> Center Maintenance, Laurel Museum, Goody Lake House, pool maintenance, et cetera? Those actually reflect uh, budget transfers that were done um, within Parks and Recreation as an umbrella, but because those units are differentiated between this building and the Community mm -hmm. Center, um, those transfers show up because of the way we do the budget as a department number. So transfers were made to replace ice machines at the pool, um, for snow blades, for park grills, um, for some of the utility expenses um, at the pool and some of the other buildings, uh, for the replacement of a push mower, um, and replacement tables and chairs. Okay. So within all those numbers, but those were, those are budget transfers that came through um, the mayor's office and the council office mm -hmm. president, mm -hmm. um, but now show up in the ordinance Understood. for final okay. ratification. Okay, thank you. I, I just say, well, Mr. Smalls, here, you did point out to him that mayor's office and city administrator are giving some money back, and we didn't see any from the council. Yes, sir. We well, that's because the council has such a small budget. That's right. <laughs> Do you want to change something around? Well, unlike the mayor and city administrator's budgets, you know, there's there's we no only comparison. We do what you feel appropriate. So. We understand, and we know the politics involved also. I mean, we're, we're already making sacrifices with our money. It's people's money. People's money. <laughs> Is that a volunteer from you? We, no, what I did want to say is this is one of probably three, two. Um, it's possible this could change before Monday night. And like we'll, I said, that, okay. you know, well, on July could, 8th, the, the fiscal year is just really wrapping up. Um, we'll this week's payroll. I appreciate okay. that. It'd be very nice. Ms. Nicholas? Salary that that wasn't paid out. Salary that that was not paid um, due to Mr. Brendel's death. Miss Curry. <laughs> Thank you. Could you point out again which line was the wind tax and how that affects us? So as part of the, oh, I'm sorry, the reduction in the office of the mayor, uh, as well as part of the office of the city administrator reduction in savings, um, and then that money is being moved to the miscellaneous financial uses on page three, 
that would be part of that 329,771. But Going, what was the separate amount for the win? Do we know yet, or we're estimating fifty thousand okay. dollars? All right. Um, we were part of a conference call in conjunction with MML as far as how it's going to be determined. Um, the state is taking on calculating all of that. Um, however, the people that um, that it applies to would have to have filed a um, an abeyance because they knew that the court case was um, in the works. So we have early estimates, but we just wanted to be safe since we had the funds sure. that we could set them aside. Um, and the state will have a process for FY17 where we can pay the lump sum or over the course of two years' time, they would deduct it from our monthly um, payment. payment. Okay. Thank you. And under the with the police department, is there any chance of hiring additional police officers with that money? No. Um, there's funding in the FY16 budget, if you'll recall, for additional. But at this point, no, you wouldn't be able to take this money and, okay. and transfer it to an operating compensation situation. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the council? And by the way, for the record, Mr. Lez is in a very important meeting down in Annapolis tonight. And he's running a little bit late, and so he hopes to be here. Okay, anybody? We'll go on to item number two, consideration and recommend consideration of a recommendation to reject bids uh, received from LA 15-4 Van Dusen Road Bike Path. Mr. Free. Good evening. Um, yes, yeah, so on the 29th of May, we had open sealed bids. Um, and we received three bids from uh, various companies uh, ranging in price of just over $452,000 to $750,000 to do this bikeway um, between Conti Road and Kilbaron Drive along Van Dusen Road. Um, presently in the budget with the state um, money that they gave us and our own money, there's only $275,000 in this project. So what we're going to do is uh, would like to rebid it with some of the, uh, um, I guess, look at it real close and see if there's some things we can take out. And I think by adding other street projects to it, uh, should be able to get a better price, hopefully within a budget we have. Okay. Questions from the council? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Free. Item number three. Resolution concerning the Mayor and City Council of Laurel tax increment financing special obligation bonds Town Center Laurel Series 2013. Christy? <laughs> Mr. Manzi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, what you're here for tonight is a, uh, uh, there's going to be a sale of the uh, center at Laurel. And as part of that sale, the bonds, the TIF that was created for the uh, center at Laurel will be sold. And in order to do that, there are a number of documents that need to be agreed to and uh, and one of them requires that the city consent to the sale. And that is part of the documentation that you have before you tonight. This is, the, and Mr. Dory is here and can explain it better than I can, but basically the document that's before you tonight really is the initial resolution that will authorize the mayor to, after the contract is finally arrived at between the parties, uh, agree to the agreement and then sign off on it on behalf of the city because the city has the right to say yes or no to, to any deal for the sale of this property based on uh, what we negotiated early on in, the, uh, in this, in this uh, initial uh, deal for the center. 
So, Bob, okay. if you want to. Good evening, Mr. Jury. Thank you up. very much for coming this evening. Mr. President, uh, members of the council, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm very glad to be here with all of you. Bob Dory, Miles and Stockbridge, Bond Council to the city. Um, as Mr. Manzi said, back in 2013, the city issued these tax increment financing bonds uh, to finance certain infrastructure improvements related to uh, the town center at Laurel. Uh, the, the bonds were initially structured as drawdown or advance bonds, kind of like a construction mortgage, and were sold actually to the owners of the center. Uh, and basically, they were taking money out of their left pocket, funneling it through the bonds, and um, increasing the principal amount of the bonds as they went along. In the anticipation that once the assessed values of the property went up enough so that the 70% of the tax increment, the tax increment being the increase in the value of the, uh, of the assessment uh, above the, uh, the value at the time, uh, the year before we issued the bonds, um, once that went up sufficiently so that the uh, that 70 percent of the tax increment would support the bonds if they were remarketed to the public uh, on a tax exempt basis at a fixed rate the intention was that the the owners of the bonds would uh, in effect direct request uh, coordinate with the city on remarketing those bonds and getting their money back um, what has now happened is that the owners of the center uh, before that happened, uh, are in the process of selling the center to an entity created by UBS, the old Payne Weber folks, for those of us who, who were old enough to remember that entity. Um, and uh, it's some sort of an LLC. Would have, it's an investment vehicle where the, the new owners will get the tax benefits and whatever. But we'll also be in a position that, assuming the assessments continue to go up, and hopefully with the purchase price will go up, uh, the, um, be in a position where they'll be able to remarket those bonds to the public fairly soon, or have the city remarket them on their behalf, and, get, and then get their money back. So that the buyers will be paying the current owners uh, the purchase price, the outstanding balance of those bonds, which were originally issued in an amount of nine million two hundred and some thousand dollars, and I, something like seven or eight million dollars has been advanced. The rest of it is really expected for a debt service reserve and closing costs in conjunction with the remarketing. So anyway, all of that's sort of a long way around saying that under the documents, the transfer of the bonds to a new owner and the uh, assignment of the funding agreement, which is ba the basic agreement between the owners and the city, uh, it, to a new entity, requires the consent of the city. And this resolution very simply authorizes the mayor to give that consent, and that consent will be uh, based upon uh, my review and Mr. Manzi's review of the document the, basically the assignment and assumption document uh, between the two parties to make sure that the city continues to be fully protected uh, and is not giving up uh, anything material in terms of their rights. Okay. Let me uh, add one thing, and, and I know Mr. Yeah. Petra is here. Um, I do want to make sure, just a quick history here. Uh, although we're used to seeing uh, Greenberg Gibbons here, um, Greenberg Gibbons was one of the partners, I guess is a way to say this. AEW, if you go back to the originals, AEW, which was an investment firm out of Boston, I think it was, or mm -hmm. just, um, they are the and majority, I think, um, of the shopping center. They They're have- like uh, 95% or okay. something. Okay. And um, so as much as we like to say it's uh, Greenberg Gibbons, um, I think I'll let Mr. Petro speak for them. Um, I think they've been a great partner. AEW has hung in there, I should say. I've had my issues, but they, they've hung in and they got the center squared away when they were eventually there. If you could go all the way back to when Samara had it, um, I think the shopping center has proved itself. I think, Bob, it's 
important to say, uh, state that the um, requirements under this agreement, the uh, public improvements for the TIF have been completed. We've checked that out through the Department of uh, Public Works. Uh, those have all been done, um, which, you know, again, is the traffic light, the intersection, the movement of traffic, those types of and, things. And, and, are, and the bulk of the infrastructure improvements that were financed were actually uh, on the center property, property and were things like the surface parking lots and underground uh, water and sewer improvements and, and, and things like that, so right. that, which are all permitted under the statute and the city agreed to. So it's, uh, I know Mr. Manzi has a few things as well, um, but I, th I just wanted to remind everybody that it was really AEW that's really the majority stockholder here selling this piece out. And, right. Um, yeah, and, and it's been represented to me, and I, Mr. Petro will probably uh, confirm, that um, the, uh, the new owners will not initially have the Greenberg Gribbons folks as a members of their ownership group, but that they do fully intend to keep them as the manager, managing agent and the leasing agent for the property so that they will continue to be involved. They think they've been doing a good job and I guess they want them to keep there. And the Greenberg Gibbons people have indicated to me that it's their hope that at some time uh, in the not too distant future that they may get an, a minor equity position with the new owner as well. But they, the new owner just wants to have a clean break in ownership at, at this point. Thank you, thanks. Thank you. Questions, Ms. Nicholas? No Ms. Query. Yeah, um, I remember at one point, and I can't remember which part of the funding it was, that if they, uh, Greenberg Gibbons had defaulted, that it would be coming back to the city, the deed for the land. Is that still the case? I don't think that was ever the deed. I don't think we ever had a lien on the property. The, the only thing... It wasn't a lien. There was some specific language where... I think that actually was, was in that the, the first tip when we put the special... Taxing, taxing district. district there was some going. kicker in there yeah yeah but, but that, i'm not sure it was that it that, would, that didn't go when we did this the no, subsequent yeah. this part we ended up having to drop the special okay. tax district because of a, a tax exemption of the bonds reason when the when they ended up buying the bonds because they weren't just weren't marketable to the public right until the, the assessments went up significantly um, <laughs> right now they own the bonds and they're only yeah. paid from the tax increment. They okay. I want to sell that to the new guys and get out from it. It may have been the first one. I think it was. And that was that was a long time ago. By the way, that as I understand it, also uh, one of the reasons why um, the AES folks are selling this thing is that the uh, LLC that own the property were created as part of an investment fund that they have, which was supposed to be of limited duration and was formed before the 2008 crash when we were going to do this thing the first time. So as a result, the, the, the people who invested in that, in that fund, that trust, whatever it is, um, have been looking to get their money back because they were supposed to be getting it back by now or sometimes shortly from now. So that's one reason they're selling it, even though the, the center is doing gangbusters and they're very happy with how it's performing because that of course lets them sell it for more money. Mr. Smalls. My question was just answered because uh, I was interested in knowing if uh, just what was behind the current owner selling it. You just you just answered my question. So it's the investment. It's investment, right. I understand. But I think it's fair to say that uh, we are very happy with what we've all done over there and that it is doing extremely well but it's, it's also true that you know we're we the council uh, working through you and through Mr. commands you want to make sure that all the bonds are taken care of and all the tips are taken care of and it's all documented properly and that we don't have any major issues that will be left to, for us to deal with right we want there to protect will not be any changes at this point to the bonds and there will not be any changes period to the city's obligation with respect to the bonds which is going to continue to be exactly what it has been which is 75 70 percent of that of that tax increment goes to pay the bonds if 
If they sell the bonds and the property value goes way down, it's the bondholder's problem, it's not the city's. That's what we want to make sure of, to protect the city. Mr. DiPietro, comments? Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, members of council. Um, the Greenberg Gibbons clan would have been here tonight, but unfortunately the way this is working out, they're at their corporate retreat, um, which they have every year. So Brian personally, you know, he sends his apologies because he just, you know, um, and I'm going to go back and cover a little bit about what was just talked about to kind of put it more in layman's terms. But the, the most important thing is that when AEW and Samara showed up here, they had a funding, uh, you know, process out in the open market. And they do have a time limit. And you know, in other words, they say, look, we're going to put out a half a billion dollars worth of cash. And we're going to go invest in real estate. And if you want to put your money in this fund, you can put your money in this fund, and we hope we're going to get X return for it. And, um, to AEW's credit, and I certainly respect all of you, what we tolerated in the earlier part uh, of, of uh, getting this thing off the ground, but to AEW's credit, they stayed with it. Samara kept their capital in the deal, and when we finally got Greenberg Gibbons to meet these guys who were local and said, we'll take on uh, the project and they bought into the partnership as well and put some of their cash up on the table and um, obviously the success of the center I think speaks for itself but uh, what AEW now wants to do is close this fund out clear the fund get it done clear their investors out um, I can tell you that obviously the center is going to sell for more than it was worth you know when, when they started, and when I mean started, I mean started building what's there today. I can tell you that what AEW has in this project, despite the sale of the center, they've lost a lot of money. Um, because you have to remember, they bought this pre-collapse of the market mm -hmm. and at a very high premium. And, um, um, you, you know, we, we uh, you know, we kind of always keep the business straight up. We talk about things like, you know, the, the mayor's um, not so much love affair for Burlington Coat and a few other things as this was going on because, you know, they they wanted certain things done, certain amounts of money, and Macy said they didn't want to stay in Laurel, and yet they were going to leave, but we had to pay them a lot of money to leave, and that all came out of AEW's pocket. Um, and then as these things work out and you come out of a recession, then in order for the deal to even work, you know, the value is even lowered from what all the outstanding debt was in order to attract the Greenberg Gibbons to come because they, they don't want to be part of a project that's, that's deep in debt. Um, so anyhow, they have done that. UBS is a top flight investment firm as well. They're very attracted to the center. We've gone through due diligence in the last six weeks. This came up very fast. Um, they've been crawling all over the building, been up the project, I've seen people up on the roof and, you know, checking rooftops out, air conditioning units and anything else you can imagine. Um, so that, uh, this settlement will occur on July the 17th. To the public, you'll see no change because Greenberg Gibbons will continue to manage and operate the project. And, and as uh, Mr. Dory pointed out, there is uh, a good opportunity that Greenberg Gibbons will buy back in with the new owner. Right now, the new owner and, and the seller just want to do a clean sell to close their uh, entity out. And, and then we'll come back and have other discussions. Uh, the center is doing extremely well. You should be aware of the fact that we expect the, the residential component to begin construction in about 60 days. Um, they've been into the city. A lot of the permits have already been reviewed for construction in uh, very aspects of garage. Uh, the uh, final plans are in for the actual structure. I, I will tell you, we are behind a couple months, courtesy of our friends at the, you know, Washington Slow It Down Sanitary Commission. Um, we had a pre approval on our uh, water plans. We were advised just Three weeks ago, they now want us to replace water pipe systems at, at Fourth and Cherry Lane. 
Um, so we've had to go back and re-engineer several portions of the building. And that again takes weeks and weeks and weeks for people, civil engineers, architects to pull back buildings and shift things around. So it's been very complicated, but we'll get through that battle uh, soon, shortly, and they will, uh, they're uh, prepared to come out of the ground. Uh, we have uh, well into the 80 percentiles on leasing. Um, we continue to struggle with soft goods. Um, I think at some point in time, now that you're going into your master plan, I would hope maybe, I, I'll just leave this as an open invitation that I will bring people like Brian Gibbons and others here to work with, the, uh, with uh, your appointed committee to explain what's going on in retail. Um, it is not reflective of the Laurel market. I want that clearly understood to people. It's not that Joe Banks doesn't want to be here or Chico's doesn't want to be here. They come in and do a market study. Uh, unfortunately, when your retail demises over the years, like we did, um, people take new routes to go buy things. And so when they're doing their market study, if they see that Fred Smalls is buying all his suits in Columbia, and, and because that's the closest store, or he's doing it in Annapolis because he works in Annapolis, then they go, well, why am I going to build a store for Fred Smalls just because it's in Laurel? Because that means we're really not gaining any business. We're just cannibalizing that store in Columbia, putting the same money in a new store in Laurel, which costs us more money to operate. So it's, it, you know, people do not realize that every time you take a debit and a credit card out of your pocket, they know exactly where you shop, when you shop, who you're shopping with, and how often you shop. I mean, they know everything there is to know about you. And in, in places like Chico and Black White Market, they were very honest to say, we came in, we did our market study, and quite frankly, your market's too young for the product we sell. Um, and, and yet, Oshkosh and Carter's kids showed up immediately and signed their lease, wanted to get in the stores right away, because they said, you got a young market with a lot of kids and we want to be here. And I can attest to the fact that in my credit card, I knew that working because my first grandson's coming in November, and I feel like I've been buying for a child that's been living here for three years. So, it, it you know it follows those trend lines, and that is part and parcel something we're suffering uh, as a city. All of Prince George County suffers from this because most of the workforce here doesn't stay in county. The workforce goes and works someplace else, and therefore they shop someplace else. It's, you're going to drive to Northern Virginia all day. Probably is at lunchtime or after work. You're going to Galleria, or you're, you know, you're going to Tyson's Corner. Or you're going someplace to work. Um, I work in Annapolis. I stop the Annapolis Mall all the time. If I need something, it's there. You know, I go and I go do it. I've been doing that for years, and so we we keep holding the space and we keep uh, meeting with people in Vegas. I was at those meetings. I was at the meeting with Joe Banks. Um, they promised they would come back and do another study next year and take a look at the situation and see if things are getting better because we also showed them all the residential units that are coming in, new market that's coming in. So we'll keep pushing that, you know, this, I'd, I'd like to see those things as much as anybody would. In the meantime, everybody there is doing very well. The center is doing very well. Uh, the movie theater is a tremendous success um, and we are attracting people far and wide past our market, I mean, way past the market. And so now we're feeding those numbers back to those retailers saying, you know, we got people from Montgomery County, and oh, by the way, everybody from Columbia is coming to the new movie theater, so maybe you'd like to have them here on a Saturday. So those things are all going on. Um, we will stand, you know, committed to this project um, 100%. Um, you at least have my word on it because, you know, I live here too, and I want to see this thing succeed. And I, and I think at some point we should tell the story about Samara and AEW and what they were confronted with. I mean, I will tell you as one footnote, uh, intimately involved in that entire process, just before the recession, when they were ready to go about with their plan, they sent out 80 financial packages to 80 different financial institutions, of which only six kept the documents and started to run numbers and ask questions about financing the problem. That's six out of 80. And within four months, all six returned their packages and said, we're out of the lending business and recession came. And uh, this happened to a lot of individual people with their own mortgages. Um, so it happens on the commercial side as well, but it wasn't by effort. They stuck with it, glad they stuck with it. 
I think we have a solid project in the town. The bonds are safe. Um, the UPS is happy to have those bonds. They think they have a, a great center um, in their portfolio, and July 17th we'll go to settlement. <laughs> So I thank you. Be happy to answer any questions. And I said we'll be happy to come and participate in the master plan and talk about retail and what's happening, you know, and how the internet is affecting door decisions and purchases. And uh, we'll go through that whole process if it helps the city understand it. Thank, thank you, sir. Any questions from Mr. Petro? Mr. President, I do have just a comment. Um, I, I applaud the efforts uh, to on the soft goods side to get us the, the, the kind of retailer uh, that this community deserves. And I, I, I'm sure that because we're not probably going to see the Joe Banks or, or, or Chico's or, or those others you mentioned, that there won't be any compromise on, on the quality of, of retail that does come into some of those vacancies. Um, just to say that we do have a men's store, uh, but it's not the of the quality, as I said, that that this community deserves to have. Uh, I'm I'm almost one who would rather not see um, a discount men's store than um, you know to 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 see something that is is a little substandard for what. Is expected for this for this center. So, uh, and I'm sure that's that's the sentiment um, uh, of you and Greenberg Gibbons also. So, you know, I applaud your efforts. And, and you know, respectfully, that being a perfect example, what came out of this recession, to be very honest with you, and, you know, is that Men's Warehouse and Joe Banks right. got into a stock war, and you're one and the same. Men's Warehouse won. And so now they own Joe Banks. So then we're back to almost like the 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 um, Macy's tech company first purchase. If you'll recall, there were a lot of malls in the country that had Macy's on one side and the tech company on the other side. And so sooner or later, whatever, you know, I have no idea what Joe Banks and Men's Warehouse will ultimately decide. I don't know if there's going to be a surviving partner. Are they just going to run two separate stores? But all that's going on as part of this process. It comes out of the, you know, recession to maximize. You're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of buyouts of other stocks of the same competitors, and and then what happens is they have to go straighten out that now they have twice the number of stores, and in some cases those stores are competing with each other in the same center, and they own them both. So they got to work through all that financial crisis, and you know we're not going to know how that panned out or or worked, but. That's our industry. That's uh, it's it. It's not. We don't build like houses and apartments and office buildings. They kind of stay same, pretty much. But retail is always looking for a better mousetrap, a better product, and they change things, uh, you know, on a constant basis. But we got a first-rate development company in Greenberg Gibbons, and uh, I think they're committed to do whatever they can. And as I said, we're sitting on. We have plenty of stores that like to have the empty spots, but basically. What you just said, Your Honor, was, you know, we're not giving up, you know, the space in order just to put somebody in the building. We we're, we'd like to see something of a positive nature for the for the center and ultimately for the city. So. Yes, sir. Bob, just let Mr. Gibbons know I did ask about the men's clothing store again. Okay, if everything's in order. We... Bob, do you have anything else? No, no, sir. You okay with the language? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it, Ms. Mayor. It's uh, wait a minute. I talked to you too. No, the key, the key is okay. the language on the next document. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to be sure that the actual documentation uh, is uh, is satisfactory and and adequately right. protects the city. And Bob and I are working on that. Well, Mr. Petro to know so that yeah. when he goes back. Right. So we we need to we need to be careful and make sure that that works. Okay. The way the resolution is structured, and as Mr. <coughs> Petro was talking, these these folks are trying to close this transaction in the, what? Seventeenth. Seventeenth. So that's you know a week from Friday, and so that is the reason why uh, the request has been made that the council 
uh, introduce the resolution on Monday, suspend the rules and pass it. It's also the reason why the resolution uh, delegates to the mayor the ability to uh, give that consent so that in the event that, that the closing is not delayed until the council's next meeting, which I don't know when that would be, but I don't know whether it's the end of July or whether you're off for a while. But anyway, um, yeah, so if, it's, if, the, if the closing is delayed, which is always a possibility in a real estate deal, mm -hmm. um, we'll sh we should know that by Monday, but otherwise they would certainly ask that that resolution be passed and, and that the mayor working with Mr. Manzi and myself, um, make sure that the agreements at that point are satisfactory so that we're not the ones holding up the closing. Uh, and we get what we, get what we need to protect the city. We'll only hold it up if we don't get what we need. I understand. Okay. Yeah. No, we're gonna, we're gonna hold it up if we don't get what we need. I got you. But I, but I, I don't want to get held up by a legislative scheduling right, I issue. I just, yeah, no, we're, 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 we, we have, our, we have our, our direction from you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine All with right. that. Yeah. So. Good enough. Then we'll look forward to having everything finished by the 13th. And if it can't be, then we'll schedule something that uh, we can get it done with. What's the last in July? 27th. 27th in July. I think what, um, why don't you come to? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, what I think I heard him say was if the council's okay, they're looking for a suspension of the rules, go ahead and give me that approval to sign, which is why I said to Mr. Petro and others, until these two say it's okay to sign, nothing gets signed by me until and I'll report back to the council. And that's if fine not, that's if, fine with me. Okay. I'm fine with the council. Think, am I yeah. correct? That, on that's that's correct. exactly right. right. We're we're sort of in a sense, because of their schedule and the council's schedule, we're sort of asking to do it a little bit backwards. Guys, in, 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 in case in case in case they're going back and forth on some stuff, and we're not finally agreed on the term of the, of the documents by, okay. by by Monday. We're good yeah, with that. That's fine. All right. Um, thank you all for being here. Anything else? Let me just, as a side note, I read the other day that Giant Food and Food Line are going to merge. They've already done it. Have they done it? Marty, food Line's on you. Um, just right now. <clears throat> At the moment, we're a hit or miss as far as National Weather Service is concerned. <clears throat> to the south of us right now, they have a fairly active weather front. Um, Southern Prince George's County and, and uh, portions of Washington, D.C. really got hammered a few minutes ago. Yeah, so okay. just watch the weather. I mean, our issue is not the rain, it's the dam up the river. Uh, I am told that uh, they are maintaining the required three feet of storage. Okay. okay. Everybody set? Thank you all very much for coming. Good evening. That's what you told me.